Welcome to lesson number two, components of Ethereum. As we have got a good understanding of the history of Ethereum, we are able to define what Ethereum blockchain is as well. Right now, we are going to go a step deeper into understanding the various components which are there in Ethereum blockchain platform. So the objective of this particular lesson is that by the end of this lesson, you will be able to state the major uh, components which are there in Ethereum and explain what it is. The expectation from you as this particular lesson is going to, sorry, as this particular lesson is going to cover the various components of Ethereum such as gas, solidity, uh, solidity language, smart contracts, remix IDE, EVM, EVM is for Ethereum virtual machine, what it is exactly, all those things are going to get covered. So you should have a good understanding of the blockchain fundamentals and a basic overview of the blockchain evolution that we just saw right now. Just an overview is enough as we had not covered much in the details of what all things happened in each phases, but we understood that Ethereum didn't evolve overnight or didn't get developed overnight. It was a vast project which was divided into multiple phases and it was done step by step. In that phases also, there was a hard fork which happened. The first hard fork which happened was because of an incident, the DAO attack. That is when the first scenario, as we had learned, there are two scenarios wherein the hard forks happen. The first scenario is when the community the community splits into two half. The second scenario is when uh, basically they want to do a upgrade a software upgrade but it cannot be in a gradual manner it has to be done aggressively because it is poses a big vulnerability poses a big threat to the security of the system that is what we had learned in hard fork and that's something that we could relate in the evolution of blockchain as well tangerian whistle or spurious dragon were such hard forks which happened for software upgrades major software upgrades and the dao attack fork which led to the uh, which basically led to the uh, division of two like two different eth eth uh, two different kinds of eth uh, ethereum tokens to come into existence that is eth uh, eth the ether eth and the ethereum classic that is eth e etc that is what has happened right so taking a step ahead uh, while we have understood all these aspects that is what are the different components of the ethereum now this looks like a very technical uh, thing but as you can see in the diagram the architecture our intent is not to get into the technicalities right now what are all these things but just to understand at a high level how the what are these things how do they function and you know that makes block ethereum blockchain platform a completely uh, different platform than bitcoin okay so basically there are certain components that we are going to cover part by part this is just an overview of how the Ethereum architecture looks. In the Ethereum architecture, what is Ethereum? Ethereum like what is, first, let's see what is a blockchain network. A blockchain network comprises of nodes connected with each other running the same software, correct? Exactly the same thing will also apply when it comes to an Ethereum network. Ethereum client, in the case of Bitcoin, it was called as the Bitcoin client. In the case of Ethereum, it is called as the Ethereum client. Ethereum clients running on a system, making it a node in the Ethereum blockchain platform, will run will have such an architecture. And that is why you can see node written on the top. And inside the node, what are the things which are there? Obviously, the node will possess the ledger. And that is what you see block one, block two, block three, block four is nothing but the distributed ledger that is the records of all transactions the client that you see there is the software which is running that is the soft there are actually different client implementations in ethereum well all different technicalities anyways uh, the point here is you do require a client software to become an ethereum node and that's exactly the software which is there the pending pool of transactions are maintained by nodes here also the pending pool is maintained for all the valid transactions which are coming in but they are not confirmed till now then you have the mining functionality now this is basically a full node and a mining node together that is as i had stated earlier as well a mining node is a full node but a full node is not a mining node 
So this particular architecture of the node comprises of a mining node because it consists of everything. It consists of the ledger, it consists of the pending pool of transactions, it consists of the mining application as well, mining components as you can see there. So this is, are, these are the components when it comes to a blockchain node in Ethereum blockchain node, okay? And uh, the basically this interaction, this particular node, if there has to be an interaction with any kind of UI that can be done through API, uh, basically what I mean is applications are front end and back end. In the back end, if you're using Ethereum architecture, you're using smart contracts, it has to communicate with some UI in the front end and that is done through web3.js. Now these are, as I, as I stated, these are the technicalities of the architecture, which we are not going to go into the details of it, but this is how the Ethereum architecture, meaning an Ethereum node looks like. Let's go into the components of Ethereum and before we step into it, it's very important that you understand the concept of gas. What is gas? Now there are certain statements written here which you should read through while I'm explaining once slowly but, bef so, but please follow me along bobbly right now to understand what is gas. The point here is let's just forget about blockchain for some time. Let's just come to let's take a real life example. In the real life example, let's take a car. If you take a car, a vehicle, a vehicle needs fuel to go from one place to another place. If it is not electric uh, cars, that we are not talking about electric cars here. We are talking about pure gasoline. We are talking about gas. We are talking about fuel, petroleum, diesel, whatever it is. So you want to go from one place to another place. For that, you are taking your car. Your car would require a f you could require certain amount of fuel to go these much the certain amount of uh, certain distances. For example, to go for five kilometers, it would require one or two liters of petrol or whatever it is. It requires one liter for twenty kilometers. For example, just taking an example, it's quite a good mileage there, but still. Anyways, one liter and you are going for twenty kilometers. So basically, that is the measure which is required. What it means is. You as a person, you are able to go from point A to point B. The car becomes the medium for you to go to point A to point B. The processing is done through the car's engine. And for the car's engine, it is important that it gets fuel. There is a certain measure which is there. You have to cover the distance. The car takes you from A to B. But for you to go to A to B, the car is going to consume some amount of fuel. And that's exactly what is there in blockchain, in Ethereum blockchain as well. You want to do an operation in Ethereum. Operations are nothing but changing a state, like, you know, changing something from A state to a B state, changing its state, like it is currently in some state and it needs to go into another state. So that's an operation which is considered, correct? So whenever you do an operation in Ethereum, there's an equal amount of gas which gets consumed. Now the question is, what is what is gas? Who consumes gas? So the thing here is that Ethereum blockchain platform supports a lot of functionalities. If it supports a lot of functionalities, meaning it should support processing. If it has to support processing, there has to be some kind of processing entity, element, component within the network. As Ethereum is a distributed computing network, because blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer distributed computing network, you don't have this processing unit or processing power in one place. You cannot keep a centralized server as such to take care of the processing. Then how the processing, let it be smart contract execution, compiling, deploying, or whatever it is, how do you do that over the Ethereum network? To do so, what is required is a processing element, a processing component in the Ethereum network. And that processing component is actually not a physical machine, rather it's a virtual machine. And that's something we'll be looking into it in some time. But now for the sake of understanding, let's just map it to the analogy of a car. The car wants to go from point A to point B. There is a process in Ethereum which needs to be done, which changes the state of A to B. Now this process, the car consumes fuel, this process will consume fuel. The Car's engine consumes the fuel and in this case, in Ethereum's case, there is something called as Ethereum virtual machine. That is, ex that's the engine of Ethereum blockchain platform, which is going to consume this fuel. Where does, this, where does the EVM lie? The EVM is on all the nodes which are there in the network. Basically what happens is, 
rather than having your processing power in one place your power is distributed among all the machines all the nodes who comprise of the bit uh, ethereum blockchain network thus you have an illusion that's why it's called as a virtual machine it's not a hardware or like physical machine the, it takes the resources from all the nodes which are present in the ethereum blockchain network and creates ethereum virtual machine this machine needs to have a processing power and that's exactly what is gas the fuel of ethereum for any kind of operation to take place there is a fuel which is needed there is amount of gas which is needed as as we have to go a particular distance for every fixed distance there's an amount ex, fixed fuel amount is needed exactly the same way purpose of gas is to prevent the system from attackers since it's a distributed system it's not owned by any organization so obviously there has to be safe keeping done so that attackers are not able to exploit the system so there is a gas concept which comes into picture because, uh, to prevent such uh, like a distributed denial of service attack or a denial of service attack whatever it is to prevent that because every operation will cost you gas and every for every amount of gas you need to pay ethers that is why this ecosystem has a native currency called ether just as you have a country a country has an ecosystem financial ecosystem business ecosystem a complete ecosystem which relies on the country's currency for the example of us it's uh, us it's dollars for example of india it is indian rupee so basically this is the currency for you to purchase any kind of services or product within that country within that country's ecosystem similarly here also ethereum is an ecosystem blockchain ecosystem and ether is the native currency for this ecosystem for anything to happen in this ecosystem you have to pay in ethers so a gas consumption will amount into a chargeable it will amount into the ethers that you hold that is uh, relate, that is directly proportional to the ether that you hold so if you want to attack the system by conducting an infinite loop operation then what will happen you have to be that much rich because you have to have that much amount of ether to run an infinite loop and be, uh, because gas is consumed for every operation it cannot happen for free so that's one of the reasons of gas it's a very critical reason it's nothing to make any profit out of the system but it is to secure the system that brings us to smart contracts again let's just think about smart contracts are nothing but immutable pieces of code which are deployed onto the blockchain network ethereum was the blockchain platform which came up with the smart contract idea smart contracts are written in solidity and there are a lot of other languages as well but the most renowned language the most famous or the most adopted language is solidity which is based on javascript so these are contracts wherein the rules and regulations are defined conditions are specified only when the conditions are met the contract executes and that's why as i stated earlier uh, uh, as well and emphasized many times that it's like bringing in automation they are taking the intermediary ahead uh, from if, uh, away from the picture and any process or transaction happens it has to go through the smart contracts solidity as i stated is the language which is used to write smart contracts it's a very high level language even if you read it you will understand what exactly it means even if you come from a non technical background it is influenced by javascript remix tool now what is remix tool now remix ide ide stands for integrated development environments again i'm repeating ide stands for integrated development environment as i stated ethereum is a open source tool obviously you would require some kind of platform to develop your smart contracts and test your smart contracts and deploy your smart contracts and remix is the tool to do so it's nothing you you don't have to download it on your machine you can directly access from the uh, web browser itself as i have emphasized earlier as well we are not going into the technicalities of things we are just going to understand these components at a very very high level so remix tool is used to develop smart contracts language used to develop smart contract is solidity the machine which processes these smart contracts is called the evm the evm consumes gas for processing so that is what is evm that is the ethereum virtual machine which is a part of the ethereum protocol which is actually utilizing all the nodes which are there in the network are its hardware resources but it's like a single machine it is also called as a world machine and it consumes gas for uh, for doing any kind of computation or operations 
So as a Ethereum, so you write the Solidity code on Remix, you compile it through Ethereum compiler, and then it goes to the Ethereum virtual machine. And uh, it, the, as I stated, it is much more than cryptocurrency transactions. So smart contracts are also deployed onto the blockchain. This is just to give you a brief idea of it. So I hope uh, you uh, you understood that the, from this diagram, it becomes very much clear what is EVM. So basically, these are all Ethereum nodes spread across the world. These are hardware resources spread across the world, but with the help of a virtual machine installed on them, you get, with the help of the software installed on them, they create a concept of something called as a virtual machine throughout the world. And that's why it's also called as a world computer. So you give, it gives you an illusion that you are getting your processing done from a centralized server, but it is not. It is just a virtual machine which hard, whose hardware is, divided, is spread across the globe. So state all the core components of Ethereum blockchain platform. We saw gas, we saw smart contracts. For writing smart contract, you need Solidity. We saw uh, Remix tool, uh, we, uh, we learned about Remix. Remix is a tool which is used to develop contracts and we, heard, we learned about EVM, which is the virtual machine to compile, uh, to pro execute and compile these contracts and that consumes gas and gas is the fuel of Ethereum. Thank you.